Over the last five years, I've been shaping up my skills as a game developer and as a pixel artist. It's been a while since I've worked on releasing some new tips on how I create the art I make for my clients and for my professionally made video games. So today, I want to take a fresh approach into how you can become a better pixel artist. I've worked on a couple other videos in this pixel art beginner to expert series. However, the advice I would like to give for this episode will actually be related to images you should be familiar with from the thumbnail of this video. Here are two versions of the same creature with a not so brilliant quality on the left and a professional quality version on the right. Well, I would like to use these two sprites as a way for us to break down how you can develop your artwork from a new to a pro level. The first aspect that differentiates these two images would be something I don't think I have ever really talked about in my tutorial series. But if you haven't already seen the biggest difference, it would be in the sprites image resolution. The monster on the left is half the pixel resolution of the monster on the right. Meaning between these two sprites, there is double the pixel density difference with the sizing being a 32 by 32 compared to a 64 by 64 sized canvas. Now in the past, I've explained that I make the majority of my art in a 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 sized canvas. So why am I showing a noob 32 by 32 drawing and an expert at a 64 by 64 sized canvas? Well, the pixel density of an image is a case-by-case -case basis. You can have professional quality art at a lower resolution. However, the bigger the canvas, the more detail you can fit, usually resulting in a more detailed image as long as you use your space efficiently and make sure you are using the right canvas size needed for what you're trying to create. Here are a few examples of monsters in my upcoming RPG Monster Tribe, with the bigger ones being the true quality of the monsters in-game, and the smaller images being a basic representation of the monster's idea in a simplistic style. I blew up the smaller drawing of one of the monsters into the same canvas size as the original monster drawing, and then just cleaned up some lines to make sure the pixel density is the same on both images but you can clearly make out a huge difference between the two images. Why is that? Well, the usage of pixels and the density of information in the detailed version was implemented much more effectively. Making sure you are considering how large your canvas needs to be to fit in all of the details you are trying to portray on your image is extremely important. But there isn't a one size fits all canvas resolution. Just make sure you are giving yourself enough detail to create all your components of your sprite without going overboard with empty space and unneeded pixel detail. Well, now that we've talked about the resolution sizing difference between these two images, the next big change between these two would be the actual detailing and texturing that the image on the left lacks, and how we can use the image on the right to carry forward a better approach to professional pixel art quality. When looking at any sprite you will ever create, every single object has a specific texturing or material. Whether you are making an axe with a wooden handle and a metal axe head, or a berry with a smooth, rounded exterior, all objects will have their own detailing. We can take a look at another monster from my game, Monster Tribe, to see how different textures can be applied to the same object. This creature has a rocky exterior on its scales, with smooth, leathery skin on its head, and ruffled fur along its stomach. Every texture has been created differently using different techniques to shade and highlight parts of the body to match a specific material type. Define what makes something rough with lots of jagged shadows or what makes something look smooth with large masses of base colors and finely rounded highlights and shadows. The way I learned to detail my textures was through looking at real world examples of different textures and trying to emulate these in pixel art. Foliage should be circular and patchy, while wood should use a lot of straight lines and slim shadows and highlights. This will take a lot of time to break down every material type, but it is extremely important to get your pixel art abilities to that next level. This is something you want to learn over time, so don't take on every single material type all at the same time. Now, moving away from the technical approaches of bettering your artistic skills, this next aspect is more of a creative approach to better artwork. 
When looking at these two images of the Sphinx lion monster, some elements that could link these ideas together would be the feelings and emotions of what this creature represents. To me, this creature is taking on two extremely powerful dominant beings, and so the theme of the monster should match this as well. I would expect this creature to be fierce, violent, strong, and so I created this drawing with those feelings and emotions in mind. The drawing on the left looks weak, fragile, and honestly, quite goofy looking, which causes the drawing to feel disconnected and silly from its concept. Now, with this being said, I am not saying that in order to create professional artwork, you need to create serious or edgy sprites. It is completely dependent on the project you are working on, what the artwork is supposed to express and make you feel. So for this next example, I will pull up two more monsters from my game to show how professionalism lies in the believability over the type of thematic. The monster on the left is very slender, spiked, and withdrawn, giving a feeling of danger and mystery, while the drawing on the right has a smooth and rounded appearance with a lot of facial expression and excitement. This monster feels more docile and playful, but because the entire aspect of the drawing plays into this behavior, it doesn't feel any less professionally made than the image on the left. With this final aspect of boosting your skills as an artist, I would like to discuss a topic that is actually not related to the quality between these two images, but rather taking a look at two nearly identical sprites breaking down the singular difference that drastically alters the professionalism between the two images. Before I go ahead and reveal these images, what is something that every single person watching this video has in common? Well, other than the fact that we're all looking to become better pixel artists, we all live on and contribute to our planet Earth. Well, the sponsor of this video, Ren, is extremely helpful when it comes to helping our planet and making an impact on climate change. Normally, I only enforce products that give you guys an upper hand on making a difference in your game development skills or workflow, but this exception is extremely important. I have always had an immense appreciation for the nature around me. Well, today I want to quickly explain how you can join me in helping our planet and lower your carbon footprint using REN. REN allows you to keep track of how much CO2 you are emitting in your daily routine, and by just answering a few questions, it can advise you on how you can reduce your personal mission to lower your carbon footprint. REN also supports a handful of projects to contribute to the effects of climate change. You can donate to even further reduce or even completely offset your carbon footprint from projects like community tree planting to help our natural ecosystems and biodiversity to funding technologies like biocharring and mineral weathering to store carbon away for thousands of years and reducing unneeded wildfires to save our forests. This sponsor is extremely important to me and hopefully to you as well. So make sure to sign up and start looking into how you yourself can start funding our planet and lowering our CO2 emissions on a global scale. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. I know this is very different than most sponsors I do, but I do think that we all need to understand how important our climate actually is to us. So I'm extremely grateful for Ren sponsoring today's video. Okay, so coming back to our two mystery sprites. What makes the image on the right more professional than this image here on the left? If you haven't already guessed, it's the technique of how these two identical sprites have been colored. The image on the left has been colored through a brightness increase or decrease to change the lighting of each shade of color, while the image on the right, also using a value increase or decrease for brightness, I have also shifted the hue of each color slightly and adjusted the saturation to create colors that pop and stand out on one another for a more accurate depiction of real colors found in natural lighting and shading. When you're darkening your colors, you want to typically add more saturation and blue into your shade, and for highlights, you want to desaturate the color and add more yellow to the hue. Using alternatives like online color palettes to get you started in color theory is a great alternative to keep your colors consistent and eye-catching right from the beginning. Different styles of pixel art can have different color rules though. When you look at a game like Kirby Superstar for the DS with bright, saturated, bubbly colors, you'll notice a massive difference from something like Blasphemous with dark, desaturated, gloomy colors, which can also come full circle back to our previous tip on the art's thematic. 
Colors are a deep part of what can change the mood or feeling of your artwork just as much as the execution of the drawing result itself. Well, I really hope you have learned a few new strategies or pieces of advice on how pixel artists create professional pixel art. But if you need some more help, I have already created a pixel art tutorial series on YouTube, and I actually just released my second pixel art step-by-step -step course over on gamedev.tv if you still need more help directly through how I create and teach thousands of pixel artists around the world. This course was specifically on how to create characters and monsters, and this is also the first time I ever talk about animation in a pixel art tutorial or course of mine, but regardless on if you decide to take a look at my courses or my other tutorials, just keep practicing and I promise you your skills will improve when you follow the right advice and build a foundation of useful techniques and strategies.